The day after, they're in the dark. Following last night's storm burst, thousands of Marylanders remained without power today. We'll show you how they're coping as they clean up. Hello, I'm Lisa Willis. Also tonight at 10, the one thing they didn't need any more of in the Midwest, rain. We'll have an update on the battle with the mighty Mississippi. And an uncertain future on the job front as a major manufacturer considers closing plants nationwide, including two in Maryland. Join us tonight for Fox 45 News at 10. Hello everyone, I'm Jeff Barnes. And I'm Lisa Willis. One of the women broke down in tears as she told how the teacher she trusted became her lover and her only friend. Another said they did it all over the school. Former Northeast High School teacher Ron Price is on trial, accused of sexually abusing three of his former students. The case shocked Anne Arundel County and the nation last spring. John Rydell has more on the first day of his trial. Sagafi Nejad, who is a professor at Loyola College and is considered an expert in the Middle East. Welcome, Mr. Sagafi Nejad. Thank you, Lisa. First of all, the United States has always kind of fancied itself as a facilitator, a negotiator for Middle East peace, but now we know of meetings held in a cabin kitchen in Norway at about 2 in the morning without the United States involvement. Now, what does this say for our role in the process? It doesn't say anything about... Sometimes people are faced with a health care situation as in a pregnancy like Chantal Menendez when all of a sudden you don't know what to do and you were ready to have the baby at home because yeah. you were afraid <laughs> of obviously the horror stories that you've heard of people having maybe twenty, thirty, maybe a hundred thousand dollar hospital bill because of a, a pregnancy. Yeah, how did that happen? They'll have to set top priorities and find a way to distribute the cost fairly. It has to be one of the biggest challenges of our time. Bordering on a cure. I'm Doug Wilson. And I'm Lisa Willis. Good night. This Fox 45 News special report. Townsend stopped by Fox 45 to explain how he got the idea for the film. Watching Batman, watching Superman, Spider-Man. You're working with some legendary people when you just rattled off a few of those names. What's it like to direct a legend such as uh, James L. Jones? Well, you know, sometimes I, was, I, I would, would wonder if he was going to listen to me. Back to you. Skip, earlier I happened to see you on the satellite and things were really blowing around out there. Now, you did say that it was in a lull for right now, but how long have the conditions started to deteriorate? Was it nicer earlier today? Wedding bells are ringing for two members of the Kennedy clan. News of the impending nuptials tops tonight's newsreel. You're hurting over this one. <laughs> First, there's John Kennedy Jr. Don't use that. That's already used. The most eligible bachelor in New York. There's word he's applied for a marriage license I can't believe it. in Los Angeles with actress Daryl Hannah, his girlfriend of three years. Hmm. But one British newspaper says, Lisa, the couple may already be hitched. And John's cousin, Representative Joe Kennedy, is engaged to a staffer in his office. It would be his second marriage. How about that? Yeah, how about upset. It? From wedding announcements to a very big birth announcement. Thanks a lot, Steve. Just over a week ago, two little girls lie in a Baltimore hospital incubator, crying and wiggling like most other newborns would. But what made these Washington, D.C. twins different was their close proximity to each other. Today, for the first time, meet the Varela twins, who doctors knew before birth were joined physically, but not for life. You can see the joy in Elva Varela's face as she cradles her nine-day-old baby girl. Little Abigail was just one of two infants Elva gave birth to on that day. But what we are noticing more and more is the people on the street corners holding signs that read like Situation Wanted ads. Will they really work for food? Do they really need a job? Are these a sign of the times? This is the look of desperation. I don't want to do this, but to live out here, I got to survive like you. I got to eat. You, know, you don't know who's for real and who's not for real. Some of those people really are in need, and some of them just don't have it in their heart to be sincere. You know, but you can't be judgmental against those people. You have to help them. You know, sometimes it's not in your heart to say yes, but maybe you just have to say yes. I was trying to use shoes for a job. I was getting to get on my knees to scrub a floor for a job. Sweetheart, all I want to do is work. The sign reads, we'll work for food. I'm homeless, please help. Need a job. Is it a gimmick or is it a sign of the times? Today, this is what they call work. Tonight, the streets will be their home. And in the end, there was lots of hand-holding. Well, watch, she says to all of us here, good night, and then they, they do the hand thing. You'll see that in a second. Let's see this motion yeah, it'll, here. It'll happen. Wow, look at that chemistry. <laughs> there, can, can we there, it? there we, right thank there. goodness. One more, and there's one more. <laughs> it was only a half-hour program. 
<laughs> Goodness. Well, About time, Dan. It. We've never done that. No, no. There you go. We did it at the end, too. <laughs> That's it for our news at 10 tonight. Thanks for joining us. I'm Lisa Did Willis. it a lot faster than Dan and Connie, too, may I add. I'm Jeff Barn. Have a great night. We'll see you again tomorrow at 10. Bye-bye. <laughs>